as always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving on. In order to proceed in solving this question, we're going to have to add a couple of extra labels to the figure. So first we've extended a line from this point straight up and we've labeled this angle theta. Now how do we know that that would be the same theta as this theta here? Well, we do know that this side right here is parallel to this side here. And then if you'll notice in the figure, there's this blue line that's cutting through those parallel lines. We probably remember from geometry that when we have two lines that are parallel cut by a third line, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So those two angles would be equal. We've also labeled this distance here 9 and this distance here as 6. It's also going to be useful to call the length from here to here L1 and then the length from here to here L2. We're next going to focus on a couple of triangles here. We've got one that we could perhaps color in blue here, and then a second one that we can color in orange. Looking at the blue triangle, we could hopefully see that the sine of this angle theta right here would equal the opposite side, which is 9, over the hypotenuse, which is L1. So we could write that out. The sine of that angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Similarly, in the right triangle, we have an angle theta here, and we would see that the cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent side of 6 over the hypotenuse of L2. So the cosine of the angle in the orange triangle is equal to the adjacent over L2. We can solve these equations for L1 or L2. For example, if we multiply both sides of this equation by L1, we could cancel the L1s and then divide both sides by sine of theta. And we're going to do a similar solving for the cosine equation. Notice that the total length of the pipe would be simply the L1 added to the L2. And of course we just came up with expressions for L1 and L2 so we're going to plug them in. Notice again that because L1 and L2 are in terms of theta we can write the total length as a function of theta. So then we'll replace L1 with 9 over the sine of theta, and then we'll replace L2 with 6 over the cosine of theta. This gives us our equation that we're going to try to optimize. Now it turns out that we can rewrite this equation in a slightly different form. We simply have to recall that 1 over sine of theta is equal to the cosecant of theta, and also that 1 over cosine theta is equal to the secant of theta. We actually do have that if you look carefully. This 9 can be thought of as 9 times 1. So right there we have a 1 over sine theta that's going to be replaced by cosecant. Same thing over here. The 6 has a multiplication of 1 right there so that 1 over cosine theta can be replaced with secant. Now with those substitutions we can calculate the derivative of this equation f prime of theta. We do have to remember that the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant theta cotangent theta and then the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta. So a little bit of review of the... We could simplify this just a touch by moving this negative sign out into the front and dropping parentheses. And then of course our next step is to set the derivative equal to zero. We can add the 9 cosecant theta cotangent theta to both sides of the equation. That's going to shift it over to the right. We can actually rewrite secant theta, tan theta, cosecant theta, and cotangent theta back in terms of either sine or cosine. So let's take a look at that. So sec theta again is 1 over cos, tan is sine over cos, cosecant is 1 over sine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. We can actually simplify this just a little bit more by multiplying all the numerators and then also multiplying the denominators. We'll do the same thing on the right side as well. We can then cross multiply the equation. So notice when we multiply that way we're going to end up with 6 sine cubed of theta and then that's going to be set equal to cross multiplying the other way which will become 9 cosine cubed theta. We could perhaps divide both sides by 6 and then finally divide both sides by cosine cubed. Now of course on the right side that's going to end up just canceling. Notice when we divide on the left side by cosine cubed we have sine cubed over cosine cubed. Well, of course, that's the same thing as just tangent cubed, so we can rewrite that. And finally, if we take the cube root of both sides, we're going to end up with the just tangent of theta on the left. And since we're running out of room over there, we can bring that result here 
So with the result that tangent of theta is equal to the cube root of 3 halves, we'll notice that we can draw a right triangle. It's actually going to be useful to call the cube root of 3 halves the same thing as the cube root of 1.5. And indeed, we can go further than that. We can call that 1.5 raised to the 1 third power. Now, if this angle here we call theta, then we can label this side of the triangle 1.5 to the power of 1 third, and this side of the triangle 1. Now, that should make sense because remember, the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So here we have the opposite side, and then here we have the adjacent side. And if we divide those two sides, we are indeed left with simply the 1.5 raised to the 1 third. To find the hypotenuse, we could use Pythagorean theorem. Notice right here, that'll become to the 2 thirds. And then if we square root both sides, we can see that c is equal to the square root of 1 plus 1.5 to the 2 thirds. Now, of course, you might be wondering what was the purpose of coming up with this right triangle. Well, let's go back and remind ourselves what the function was for the length of the pipe. So now all we have to do is refer to the right triangle to come up with expressions for cosecant and also secant. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it will be the hypotenuse over the opposite, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it will be the hypotenuse over adjacent. So referring to the right triangle, we can calculate f of our angle. If it helps, we can remind ourselves that this is the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. So this rather ghastly expression would represent, indeed, the length of the pipe. At this point, you definitely want to pick up your calculator and simplify it. And when you do that, you should get approximately 21.07 feet, which will represent the maximum length of the pipe. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you liked it, please subscribe to stay tuned for additional videos. You're also welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen.